maybe I was really attracted by techno in the mm -hmm. beginning because it was a total anonymous thing. You would not use your real name. Yeah. And you would not yeah. show your real face, mm -hmm. and um, you, the point was like it's the music, it's about the music, not who you are, and all this. Mm. So um, this is actually in the beginning what um, attracted me most about techno or house music, um, getting rid of that stage situation, that rock stardom, and um, so I think these were the, the best days in, in the scene and now, or not now, but only a few years later, it happened in the 90s already. Raves got bigger and bigger with more sponsorship and stages got higher and higher and all of a sudden Sven Fett was the new Mick Jagger and we <laughs> were in the same bullshit again. Yeah guys doing like super commercial stuff they don't do it because they have a business concept I think they really dig their shit you know <laughs> I don't believe you you go out and make records with a set um, career in mind mm -hmm. I think you take it one by one you want to do that one record and then as a natural evolution you'll do the next one and one thing I can tell you it's it's easy to do your best work when you start and I realize many people are like this mm -hmm. like the debut album is the best for a lot of bands one thing that's really important is you have to keep going you have to keep making things and this is very rarely possible for only a few really outstanding artists like Derek May to do some great stuff 20 years ago and then still maintain a kind of career without producing but like I think for the rest of us you have to be busy maybe put out something which isn't that great it's better to put out something which isn't that great than not putting out anything at all I've learned that which I think like feels wrong to me. I would rather wait uh, until I'm really ready, but if you wait too long, you're completely forgotten. I started playing in bands and actually made my very first record in 1983 playing guitar mm -hmm. and that was while I was going to school so clearly it was a hobby, a school mm -hmm. band and after I left school I never really made a serious attempt to study or anything yeah. I always knew this is what interests me yeah. most and then I started DJing in 87 I think diversity in a sense like I do stuff other people don't touch and um, and I think at the same time probably it has to do something with my style or whatever it is I think um, I think people that like my stuff they they don't think so much in genres like deep house ambient whatever they just like music and then they're surprised they like my stuff and it could be ambient or jazz or anything because it's always an expression of my aesthetics whatever and even in different genres I think it'll always sound different than from the rest and probably like me in a way yeah it was just a magical coincidence. I knew this guy from school, he was three years younger than me and he was working as a bartender in the music place venue that I always went to see bands and, and I noticed Jonas, that wasn't Jonas yeah. yeah and I was I realized that whenever he was working they played awesome music there mm -hmm. and that's how I really <laughs> got friendly with him and then but it was nothing about electronic music, it was jazz and whatever blues jazz mainly I would say and I told him have you heard there's good electronic music coming up he mm -hmm. said no way <laughs> <laughs> I said yes there is and I, I played him some whatever KLF chill out mm -hmm. and um, early Derek May and, and stuff and he was into it and then <laughs> 